All right, here's the last one that I'm going to tackle in this series of different problems that are all related to, now I don't think it's pretty shocking, um, it's Pythagoras' theorem, okay? And it's a really charming problem, by the way. I encourage you to actually give this a whirl, get a piece of paper out, and you can see that you can create with an eight by 12 piece of paper folded such that from um, this corner down here, right? If it's just a regular old right angled, uh, let's actually, yeah, I'll do it this way. Let's do it in pencil, shall we? If I kind of imagine going down this way, here is the original piece of paper, the right angle there, right? And what I've done is I folded from here up into this corner. So you can see if I were to uh, add it in there, maybe a different color, you can see this corner goes all the way up into here. Um, what you want to do is find where the midpoint of this uh, longer side is. And then the question is, what is the length of this fold? What is this length in here, okay? There you go, sorry, it's not very neat. All right, now, charming question. I hope you don't mind that what I've done is I've prepared earlier um, a diagram, a more like a non picture of a piece of paper diagram that we're gonna be able to do all of our constructions on. So I hope you can see it's basically the same thing, right? Here's the original piece of paper. And then what you've got in outline here is, uh, again, imagine drawing this same kind of um, uh, going from the corner and drawing it up into there, uh, or folding it rather, up into there, and we're going to try and find out what this uh, this length here is going to be. Okay, and so since that's the unknown, I'm going to call that x, and I better get this uh, blue fold <laughs> arrow out of the way because it's going to cloud our diagram very briefly. So, what's the length of this fold? What I want to start doing is assembling the information that I know and then trying to find uh, what x is by relating all those pieces of information together. So the first thing I note is that it's an 8 by 12 piece of paper. So this is the shorter length over here. So I guess that must be 8. And uh, this entire length across the top is 12. But I know that this point up here that I was folding up to is the midpoint of an edge, which tells me that this is 6. Now, what I want to do then is say, how can I get this 6 and this 8 and relate them to the x, right? Well, for starters, um, because I've sort of gotten in the, in the rhythm of things already, I know that there are going to be some right angle triangles um, here, and some of them are very easy to spot, right? So for example, um, I've obviously got a right angle triangle happening up in this top left hand corner. Um, however, um, even though it's sort of promising to be able to get from this 6 into this hypotenuse to then get toward the x, um, I, I don't know this other length over here. So I guess I could say, well, maybe we call this, um, I, I don't know what's happening with the proportions of this fold up here. Um, because it's another unknown, I guess I'll maybe I'll call this a. Um, and that means because uh, this whole vertical length here is 8, then this lower length here is going to be the difference, right? So this is going to be 8 take away a. So this goes this far, and then this one goes this far. Okay, so far so good. Now, what this tells me is if I have a look, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat and grab that triangle that I drew before, cause, it, cause I'm lazy, um, and it's already been done. There we go, all the way back to this question. Let's, let's grab this one. So if I go all the way, here we are, and pop this in, let's, whoa, where did it go? Try it again, ta-da. Let's put that there, and now if I move that up, okay, excellent. I've got a right angle triangle here, right? And it allows me to work out the hypotenuse here, which is gonna be a good step in the right direction, because you can see that um, as I um, sort of work out more about this triangle here in the middle, um, it's going to be able to help me get towards this X, okay? so. What can I do here? Well, I noticed that um, because I can just say using you know right angle triangles, this is going to be the square root of um, a squared plus 36. So I know I'm doing a little bit in my head here, but all this comes from is a squared plus six squared equals this hypotenuse squared. So if I were to take the square root and then simplify that six squared, this is what you would get. Okay. So this is good. Um, one of the things that I notice as well is this is not the only right angle triangle which I can create, which helps me get to like information about this bigger triangle here, right? Now, um, you can see I've got this length over here, and if I sort of lean in from the right hand side of the rectangle here, so if I were to create, let's do it this way, a vertical line here, um, I know that this length here is going to be eight as well because I just drew it parallel, it's vertical. 
Um, what I've got over here is, let's duplicate this, I've got another right angled triangle here, like so. Uh, let's make this one a different color. The filling as well. There we go. So this triangle here is also right angled because remember, um, I sort of drew this line by just going straight vertically up, okay? But I, I can get some information about this triangle here and this triangle here because if you look closely, there's actually a very important relationship between these two triangles. I wonder if you can spot it. Think for a moment with me. Remember, this was created, this whole diagram was created by um, taking this rectangular piece of paper, so it's got right angles at all of its corners, and then folding it up to here, right? So if there was a right angle here originally, then there is still a right angle in this piece of paper at the corner when it's in a different place, right? So there's a right angled triangle in the middle here, um, created here in this corner. So if I say, hey look, there's a, th there's, a, there's a right angle there, if I name this angle theta in here, what that tells me is if I have a look at these three angles on this straight line, right, theta plus 90 over here, what does this angle have to be to make these angles add up to 180? And hopefully you can determine pretty quickly that's going to be the complement of 90. It'll be 90 minus theta in this corner here. Now because I've got this angle, I've also got a right angle, that tells you down in the corner that this is also going to be theta, right? So this is brilliant because what I've got now is I've got two triangles, the blue and the green one, which they're both right angled, they both have a theta in them, so these are in fact similar to each other. They're going to be equiangular. As soon as you've got two angles being equal to each other, obviously the third angle must also be equal. So if you wanted, you could put the complement of theta over here as well, but we don't need to. We've got a theta and a theta here, right? So therefore, let's just sort of bring these together um, in a sort of separate little diagram over here. If I duplicate that one, and I know it'll be a little easier to see if we get them in the same orientation. And by the way, this is a trick that I use all the time when I'm trying to line up similar triangles with each other and, and look at where their features are that, that are um, in ratio with each other. So you can see I've got a 6 a triangle here and then if you compare that to um, this triangle over here, the green one, the taller one, right, you might recall that uh, this length over here is the one that's rotated to become this length over here. So this is 8 and to confirm that you can see that the theta which is here in the corner is also the theta jammed between the 8 and also the hypotenuse in this original triangle right before I rotated it anyway. So therefore, if you have a look, right, uh, using the ratios, the thing that is going to be valuable here about right angled, sorry, about similar triangles is that uh, corresponding sides are in proportion. So can you see that going from here to here, what we're doing is we are multiplying by 4 over 3. This is a third times longer than the other side. So therefore, I can do the same thing with this other length over here, right? I'm just going to multiply by 4 over over three. That's what it means for the sides to be, the corresponding sides rather, to be in the same proportion. So four thirds time a, times a is just four thirds a, right? 